Okay, after you've signed up for Notebook LM and you are ready to get started using it, first thing you need to do is to create a notebook. I've already got a couple created here. It comes preloaded with no introduction to Notebook LM and some example notebooks here down at the bottom. And then you see I've already added my own notebooks for each of the courses I'm teaching this semester. What you're going to want to do to make your own is obviously click on New Notebook. So you click on New Notebook and it takes you directly to this uh, upload um, window. So I'm going to click on PDF here and I'm going to go to my folder for this course and I'm going to upload the syllabus to that class into this notebook and I'll just go right up here and go ahead and title it and I'll just title this philosophy 1000.1 uh, here and you'll see that it automatically generates a summary of that syllabus right here and also gives you some links to a briefing document, a timeline, table of contents, a study guide, and an FAQ. But you can start asking questions about the syllabus, right? So for example, uh, when is the first exam And so it tells me when the first exam is right here and Notebook LM links back to the original document to give you that information. So there's, there it is in the actual source side by side there. And then I can pin that uh, for later. Right. Okay, so here I've got um, two sources loaded into my Notebook LM. This happens to be for my Introduction to Philosophy class, so I've got the syllabus here and I've got the PDF of the textbook uh, loaded as well. So you can obviously ask it questions about your source materials that you've uploaded. It already gives you a couple of um, suggestions here right above the chat dialog down at the bottom, what grade represents an average understanding of the material, um, how many homework quizzes are there total. Uh, where can students find the final exam schedule? So it's already giving you some prompt ideas there. If I um, deselect the syllabus, right, and just click on the textbook, it generates a um, source guide for me. So it gives me a brief summary of this book and then gives you some key topic ideas that you can explore further, right? So let me close that out by clicking. So a basic source guide. If I um, keep that selected and go down to notebook guide here, it's going to give me a couple of options. It gives me that summary again. It also gives me an FAQ that it will generate. Takes a minute there. and then it gives me a new note. You can put your own title in right up here if you want. Uh, frequently asked questions about pop uh, philosophy and pop culture. This is the book. How does the TV uh, show South Park illustrate logical fallacies? What, are the, what, what is the skeptical dilemma presented in The Matrix and how does it relate to philosophy of Descartes? So you see it gives you frequently asked questions there. If I go that are about that textbook. That could be a helpful study guide. Here it gives you a study guide itself. Again, going to generate a note for me. And you can click in the box here to save that note, or you can go up here and add your own note about that source as well, right there. Might as well mention that while it's loading our, our study guide here. And again, gives you some prompt queries suggestions down here right above the chat. Again, taking a second to generate it here, but going to produce that note for me on South Park and philosophy, and it gives me um, a study guide, basically. It gives me some study questions. So answer the following questions in two to three sentences each based on the provided excerpts from introdu Introducing Philosophy Through Pop Culture and other source material. So again, gives me some study questions to use as I'm working through the reading assignment or studying for an exam or a quiz, right? And again, you can save that um, there. 
we could also ask questions of our own. So I might ask, um, I happen to know, of, of course I've read, read the book itself, so I'm just going to ask, um, what is the ad hominem fa fallacy? It's one of the fallacies that I always teach in my classes, very, very common informal fallacy. It's discussed in one of the reading assignments there, and it gives me an explanation of that concept, and it grounds it again in the text, so it will take me to the relevant portion of the text that's in that PDF and show me the explanation that it's given here and then the text itself over here on the left. And then to close that out, I can just go back to this, and you can close chat or go back to the notebook guide or ask further questions about the output that you've just generated. And again, you can save these each of these notes up here by clicking the pen or add your own note. So um, I'm going to ask it, what are some examples of ad hominem fallacies? I think it already gave me one or two in that first response, but let's ask, ask a more specific question about ad hominems. And it gives me some examples from the article that are discussed there. And then what are some other informal fallacies? And again, just to mention this while it's generating its response, it gives me some suggestion prompts here too. What moral obligation does Batman have, if any, right? How can the show South Park be compared to the works of Plato? How can Black Mirror be used to examine the dangers of online shaming? Um, so again, it gives me some suggested prompts if I don't have one of, specific one of my own. And again, here's the output, and it gives me an explanation of some of the basic informal fallacies discussed in that article on the Chewbacca defense in South Park. So this will be a very helpful study tool uh, for students, I think. You can get information out of the syllabus. You can get information out of your source assigned materials. You just got to upload them here. And then, of course, you're always checking the output of the AI against the source document as well. And since it makes it so easy to give you those things side by side, it's very easy to check. So I think this will be a very useful tool for students um, to study with, to use to help familiarize themselves and check their own understanding of the reading material and to help prepare them to do readings or to help review it. And then, you know, obviously it has the note taking feature that you can use to go back and review and study for exams with. So I think this will be a, a very helpful tool for folks. Uh, I hope this video uh, gives you a little bit of insight into how to use it, and uh, good luck studying.